beach weekends in Las Vegas, Diddy and Brown's interactions have long captivated fans. With this new footage making waves, it will be intriguing to see how it alters public perception of them, particularly in light of their respective controversies. Will it add yet another layer to the carefully crafted images they project, or will it fundamentally change how the public views them? This newfound interest in their friendship encourages a deeper examination of what lies beyond the headlines, inviting us to consider how their relationship has evolved over time. Diddy, born Sean Combs, has built a formidable brand in the music industry, branching out into fashion, spirits and media, establishing himself as a global business mogul known for his wealth and ambition. Conversely, Russell Brand's journey has been anything but conventional. He rose to fame as a bold and outspoken comedian in the UK. Yeah, I was like, and then I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something I didn't want to do. And what? Just sh and what? Just sh and what? Just sh you've been off. Yeah. Oh, they're in the room. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. That was my way of yes, cueing yeah. you. Like it's open dialogue. Yeah. You want me to keep talking about by, it? By all means, let's, <laughs> we can keep talk about anything. But <laughs> but don't do it. Yeah. Every name the man ever used. Shaw Combs, aka Puff Daddy, aka P. Diddy, aka Diddy, aka P. D., aka Love. I would just like to note here that I do not remember the P. D. era. That is number one. And number two, shockingly, for those of us who are old enough to remember when he was Puffy, Puffy did not make this. And it appears Puffy did not make this, I guess because he stopped calling himself Puffy way before the allegations in the paperwork. And basically what they are saying is that up until... And he, when, he, when he put his head down, it's one of them white boys sucking on him. Oh. You understand? That has happened. You understand what I'm saying? Then you got these guys who they go into these Turkish houses. Once you get to that door, you don't go back in there. But you know what they do in them Turkish houses. Well, you can assume what they do, quote unquote. Hundred victims. What? More than two dozen of those future players. How does that even make sense? One hundred victims. This is just one one phase of the allegations and stuff like on top of that, he had allegations prior. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. Diddy Combs, on behalf of more than 100 victims, more than two dozen of those future plaintiffs say they were just kids when oh. Combs allegedly assaulted them. 
We're talking parties are the hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop. We gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You gonna hear about my party? They're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. You know, whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment. A recently resurfaced video of Kevin Hart and Diddy partying has reignited old rumors about Hollywood's wild party scene. Filmed at a lavish 2010 event, the clip shows Kevin jokingly telling a friend not to sit next to him on the bed while adding a playful no homo. This light-hearted moment, set against a backdrop of dim lighting, partygoers and champagne glasses, has sparked curiosity about what really happens at these exclusive events. Diddy's parties have always been notorious for their glamorous yet secretive nature. As Kevin mingles through the crowd, moving from laughter to a more serious tone, fans are left wondering if he sensed any hidden tensions amid the celebrations. Things take a chaotic turn when a guest's hair catches fire, briefly causing panic. Kevin, caught off guard, tries to lighten the mood, asking the camera crew to cut the footage and assuring everyone of safety measures. Although intended as humour, this incident has left lingering questions, especially as the video resurfaces now. We uh, we um we want to thank you. Come here. Don't don't sit on the bed at night. No homo. No, just just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed. But it's just like yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it. You did. No, no, no. I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting in the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna. If we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even like. I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes. You know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. Now he's one of the richest stars in the world. New civil lawsuits accuse the hip hop mogul of horrific sexual assault in one case against a 10 year old boy. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky here with the details. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, George. Sean Combs is already fighting multiple assault allegations, each one more disturbing than the next. And I just want to protect her, you know? I don't want her to go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. Um, because it sounds really awful what happened to her. It sounds like she was enjoying some success. She had modeled for Tommy Hilfiger. She claims she kind of went into a deep depression after this, this night, um, that she was anxious, um, embarrassed, ashamed, you know, common things that sexual assault victims say they feel after something like this. She, she says he blackballed her. He basically took steps instead of trying to help her as she claims he promised, he actually took steps to hinder her career and that made matters even worse. So the violation I have experienced during the assault has had lasting effects on my body, causing ongoing health problems and complications. The combination of physical and emotional pain has created a cycle of suffering from which it is so hard to break free. I want to continue on this journey towards recovery and healing. I'm glad that he is locked up, but that's a temporary feeling of relief. 54-year-old Combs is in jail facing federal charges including sex trafficking, racketeering conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution. He was denied bail twice after pleading not guilty. Also, Combs' head of security, Joseph Smith, known as Big Joe, told the Daily Mail that he doesn't know Graves, calling her allegations just a, quote, money grab. Len, back to you. We don't got to clap because I'm at a point in my life like we all grew up in the streets and we try to be better, but they labeled us felons, sent us back to jail. I had to fight against that the whole time to gain my respect and be who I am today. And I'm proud of that. 
Então... The list. Please, please, God told me to ask y'all for help. I need your help. I need your help. I can't do it alone. I'm overwhelmed. I'm going crazy. And God, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. So I'm fighting this fight. And to other people, it's an impossible. It's not impossible. It's going to happen. I'm the pussy that never killed nobody, right? But that means I can say whatever I want and not go to jail. Kardashians kidnapped my daughter in public. And I didn't have the address of my child. The reappearance of this footage in 2024 is particularly troubling for Diddy, who faces serious allegations of misconduct connected to these parties. What was once viewed as glamorous is now filled with suspicion, putting Kevin in a precarious position. With his frequent appearances at these events, many wonder if his association with Diddy might tarnish his reputation. Adding to the speculation, Kevin's wife, Eniku, has stopped posting photos of him online. This change has led to theories. Some suggest it's an effort to shield their family from controversy, while others think it's simply a personal choice. For someone known for his family-friendly image, this shift raises eyebrows and suggests that all may not be well. The big question now is, was Kevin just a guest at these parties? Or is there a deeper connection to the unfolding scandal? His involvement extends to promotional events for Diddy's vodka brand, Ciroc, which raises further questions about their relationship. Just based on that it's been over 30 years since this, this act took place. Joy Dickerson Neal claims that there were people who saw the sex tape that Sean Combs made or this recording, this video that he recorded uh, of the sexual assault back in 1991. Um, you know, I think back and I think that had to have been like a VHS, a camcorder, if, if that indeed happened. You know, Sean Combs is saying it didn't happen. Um, and she's claiming there is somebody who told her that he saw it. Um, would that make her case any easier or is it just, is it difficult because it's just so old? I think that any corroborating evidence helps her case. Um, you don't want these cases to rely exclusively on he said, she said information, which is often the, the case in the sexual assault and rape um, crimes. If there is someone else who saw this um, or can testify to having a conversation and hearing about it, it's always better. Um, for the case, if there is some corroboration of her memory and her recollections of what exactly transpired. Look, I try to share in life. I think that you learn that in kindergarten. And, um, you know, unfortunately, people forget that what they learned in kindergarten a lot of times. And so sharing is a part of it. You know, let, let other people utilize your crayons too. It's okay. And so that's kind of how I live my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, share when it's appropriate. Um, set the example when it's appropriate, when it's in, when it's in line with my vision. These kind of things are a consequence of those kinds of actions, as opposed to it being like something I set out to do or contract. It wasn't planned, you know. Like everybody wants to paint themselves as a genius, but I don't. I don't even know how I got here. All I know is I follow my bliss. You know what I'm saying? I do what I love, and here we are. You know what I mean? One of the biggest music executives was just arrested. I'm curious if you have any opinion on his arrest or the alleged action. No, I feel for his children. The rest I can't speak on. I mean, you know, that's what we got court system. As Diddy faces ongoing legal issues, every interaction with Kevin is under scrutiny. For Kevin, known as a relatable family man, this association poses risks to his career and image. With public interest in these resurfaced videos rising, curiosity about Hollywood's hidden lifestyles grows. The pressure is mounting for Kevin to address his relationship with Diddy. As the narrative unfolds, speculation deepens. Social media is buzzing with opinions. Some argue Kevin should confront Diddy's alleged misconduct, while others believe he's unfairly dragged into the drama due to their association. Just watching it and just knowing that it's all coming to an end, 20 years of hits, it's just crazy. No, I said it wasn't funny. I was just like, <laughs> that was traumatic. <laughs> No. 
with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... And it was <laughs> but I don't know... Those and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. (laughs) Hey, man, that's for damn sure. Freak off the guy. Told your world up. But you know what happened. You should have never sued the the liquor company. That's where you f***ed up. You don't give a f*** about you tearing up booty holes. You f*** up when you sued the liquor company. Because the liquor company is owned by the biggest conglomerate on earth, the Black Rock people. You done bit off the hand that was feeding you. And now you chop both your feet and your hand off, and your head's coming next. You, you was making money with your Just shut the You just thought you, your ego got out of whack because you was controlling everything at them freak parties. Now you think you control the hand that's feeding you. You, 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 you stupid mother. He sued the liquor company uh, May 2023. November 2023, Cassie come up with the lawsuit. Connect the dots. Cassie got two checks. She got a check from the liquor company people that put her up to doing that shit. and she got a ch- I apologize to anyone this video may be embarrassing too um let's just jump right into it some of you, you may know me or may not I'm a music producer who's a writer and musician um different genres I started in the gospel and jazz and and R&B and Worked my way over to the hip hop side. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love Album, Off the Grid by Diddy. Um, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time, um, you know, months and at, at, at a time, 16 hours, 24 hours a day. Um, sometimes, you know, Diddy would request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And, and the truth is we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They, they hit me on below the belt on so many situations just 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 dealing with this it's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting the 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 producer fee pennies and on top of that these guys are trying to steal my publishing i can't go for that so i'm fighting back he's a fighter um but i'm 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 gonna put in this fight i gotta do it for myself my rights and most importantly my kids taking my publishing or stealing it is it's just it's, I'm not gonna let that happen. Not gonna let that happen. Again, this is one of those projects that, that took so much time from me. I miss holidays uh, with my family, just out working on this album. At one point, I was running around with the, the hard drives, the computer, just to run the ball on this album, to finish the production on it, and make sure that this album came to you know, a good project with good vibes, you know, just where it is right now. Um, and just to be offered little to no participation in this is highly disrespectful. I won't be that guy 20, 30 years from now, looking back saying, I wish I'd done this. I'm gonna do this now. Um, doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have the 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 monies that it's going to take to fight him in court. So I'm just asking, you know, if you if you in support, please 
The link is in my bio to my GoFundMe. Um, the, the money we go, will go towards my attorney fees and to just make sure I'm keeping my head above water during the process. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. The resurfaced videos have not only damaged Diddy's reputation, they've also sparked criticism of the entertainment industry, suggesting that such gatherings may hold secrets beyond what's shown. Kevin's hesitance to comment on the situation has disappointed fans, fueling speculation that he might know more than he lets on. Interestingly, several celebrities, including Ashton Kutcher, Justin Bieber and LeBron James, have unfollowed Diddy on social media. The heat is on for Kevin as public demand for clarity intensifies. Can he continue to sidestep the fallout, or will he be forced to confront his ties to Diddy? As Diddy's legal troubles continue and new revelations emerge, Kevin faces a tough choice. Stay silent and hope it blows over or risk his friendship with Diddy to speak out. The pressure is building, leading fans and Hollywood insiders to wonder if this is just another celebrity scandal or the start of a significant reckoning within the entertainment industry. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. We will keep you updated. Invade your house. You got problems. With dudes with the armor. There's someone said that they weren't there to take stuff. They were there to delete everything. Like the real people that were in there, you know. Oh, like that's funny. With Epstein. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's fine. Of course, there's layers upon layers. <laughs> they never end. There's just layers upon layers upon layers. Like you got a wild party. You also have those uh, those celebrity environments where celebrities all get together, and there's so many of them, you know, and these wild parties. And if you got a wild party and P. Diddy puts on that wild party and, you know, he sets everybody. I have any real personal beef with <laughs> Diddy, mm -mm. but it's got to go down. The, the the bits are there. I'm a gold miner. I just found some gold. You're right. I just wanted to be a good example. And uh, it was hard for me being that young and being in the industry and not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. I just want to protect her, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want her to go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. Hello. Rusty Rocket. Is this awesome. fair? Is this between us? Yeah, yes, yeah, awesome. No. New footage from a recent party has thrust Diddy and Russell Brand back into the spotlight, igniting conversations across social media about the implications of their connection. This unexpected reunion has left many pondering how it might reshape public perception of these two often controversial figures. The video captures Diddy, the influential music mogul, alongside Brand, the unpredictable comedian, in a manner that suggests their relationship is deeper than a mere brief encounter. Despite being in the public eye for decades and having crossed paths numerous times, their bond has often been overlooked. A particularly striking moment occurred at Diddy's legendary white party, an exclusive gathering where Hollywood's elite donned all white attire. Amidst the glitz and glamour, Diddy and Brand engaged in a surprisingly profound conversation. Brand's trademark humour infused a playful spirit into the sophisticated atmosphere, while Diddy's commanding presence created a captivating dynamic between the two. Boys, do you have any idea what that looks like? Well, I'm going to show you because that's apparently how many of those they pulled out of the raid, no pun intended, um, on Diddy's house when they also found the thousand bottles of lubricant and baby oil. I guess is, you know, serious about his sports. Um, Puffy is said to be a helicopter dad, you know, shows up and, you know, you know, you know what hel helicopter parenting is. <laughs> Anyway, a helicopter dad. So apparently um, the team had practice early in the morning and Justin had missed quite a few practices and then he wasn't performing uh, suitable to whoever's watching over the team. I guess they would call that the coach. <laughs> to get uh, Prince William and Prince Harry to, uh, to a ditty party. I don't think, not, not, not anymore. I mean, before, you know. <laughs> Trust me, they're off the list. <laughs> But you know, before when they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves. So, hey, I was like, why don't you come hang out with me? 
I apologize to anyone. This video may be embarrassing to. Um, let's just jump right into it. Some of you, you may know me or may not. I'm a music producer who's a writer and musician. Um, different genres. I started in the gospel and jazz and and R and B and worked my way over to the hip hop side. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love album. Off the Grid by Diddy. Um, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time, um, you know, months and at, at, at a time, 16 hours to 24 hours a day. Um, sometimes, you know, Diddy would request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And and the truth is we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They they hit me on below the belt on so many situations just 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 dealing with this is it's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting the 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 producer fee pennies and on top of that these guys are trying to steal my publishing i can't go for that so i'm fighting back he's a fighter um but i'm 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 going to put in this fight i got to do it for myself my rights and most importantly my kids taking my publishing or stealing it is is just it's, I'm not going to let that happen. Not going to let that happen. Again, this is one of those projects that, that took so much time from me. I've missed holidays uh, with my family just out working on this album. At one point, I was running around with the, the hard drives, the computer, just to run the ball on this album to finish the production on it and make sure that this album came to you know, a good project with good vibes, you know, just where it is right now. Um, and just to be offered little to no participation in this is highly disrespectful. I won't be that guy 20, 30 years from now looking back saying, I wish I'd done this. I'm going to do this now. Um, doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have the 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 monies that it's going to take to fight him in court. So I'm just asking, you know, if you if you want support, please. The link is in my bio to my GoFundMe. Um, the the money we go will go towards my attorney fees, and to just make sure I'm keeping my head above water during the process. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. This footage reveals much more than just a fleeting interaction. It showcases two men from vastly different backgrounds, reveling in each other's company and blending their worlds together. Their camaraderie truly blossomed when they collaborated on the Toonty 10 comedy Get Him to the Greek, where Diddy portrayed a larger-than-life music executive and Brand reprised his role as Aldous Snow, the chaotic rock star. Their on-screen chemistry was electric, contributing to the film's cult status. Behind-the-scenes footage illustrates their genuine friendship, brimming with laughter and mutual respect. As this footage resurfaces, it calls to mind another memorable encounter. Diddy and Brand spotted on a private jet en route to Las Vegas, a renowned playground for celebrities. In the clip, Diddy introduces Brand as a close friend, and their lively discussion about their plans for the trip reveals the strength of their bond. The video captures them in a relaxed and joyous mood, emphasizing their special friendship despite their diverse careers. Ava, I'm a Scorpio. No, 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 what's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. What's your oh. other last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. I want, you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. We, but you still have beautiful parents that mature my child also. But please, please tell the story. So, I was 
on the streets <laughs> and then Papa Combs decided <laughs> that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids. Hey, 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 that's like a little bit like borderline suspect. <laughs> I, I don't want nobody, you know, we want to get it clear. I, I adopted you like Madonna adopted kids and everybody else adopted kids, Charlize Theron, everybody that's ever adopted Sandra Bullock. I adopted you because I felt that you could, you know, um, enjoy also having a black parent to take care of you and help you out. So um, um, just clarify, because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so. <laughs> um, because it sounds really awful what happened to her. It sounds like she was enjoying some success. She had modeled for Tommy Hilfiger. She claims she kind of went into a deep depression after this, this night, um, that she was anxious, um, embarrassed, ashamed, you know, common things that sexual assault victims say they feel after something like this. She, she says he blackballed her. He basically took steps instead of trying to help her as she claims he promised, he actually took steps to hinder her career and that made matters even worse. So- 100 victims, One. more than two dozen of those future plaintiffs. How does that even make sense? 100 victims? This is just one, one phase of the allegations and stuff like, on top of that, he had allegations prior. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. Diddy Combs, on behalf of more than 100 victims, more than two dozen of those future plaintiffs say, renowned for his boundary pushing style and unpredictable antics. His ascent was driven not by business savvy, but by raw talent and an irreverent approach that frequently landed him in hot water. Despite his willingness to embrace the spotlight, Brand has often become a target for criticism. The stark contrast between their public personas adds an intriguing dimension to their friendship, prompting curiosity about how two individuals with such divergent reputations could forge such a close bond. He probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Oh, hit right back. We don't even sell, baby. Right. We be having a real conversation about some real shit. Oh, not a thousand dollars, baby. Oh, Jesus. It ain't that much ass shit in the world. Everybody know that. He probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Costco hit right back. We don't even sell, baby. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, put the, they put the drugs in the Maybell. <laughs> you thinking you getting a massage? You can't even get up. <laughs> That's why God gave me eczema. I can't even use, baby. I want to thank you, Jesus, for your small blessings. I'm not lying. Jesus gave me eczema. I'm not lying, y'all. I'm telling y'all the truth about me. I got one of the ashiest ass ever to be seen in Hollywood. Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and is there anything that you may want to confess tonight before you go in? I keep everything right here. There you go. Or right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You angelic all the time. The footage from their Vegas escapade showcases a deeper connection between them, characterized by mutual respect and camaraderie during what appears to be a light-hearted experience. As they converse on the private jet, it's clear their friendship transcends mere business interests. Diddy's introduction of Brand as a close friend underscores the depth of their relationship, likely cultivated through shared experiences in the entertainment industry, 
they seem attuned to one another, keeping abreast of the latest developments in the celebrity world, whether at parties or while collaborating on film projects. However, there's an ironic twist in this resurfaced footage. Both Diddy and Brand have weathered their share of scandals, making this glimpse into their friendship a poignant commentary on how personal lives have shaped their public images. Diddy has faced intense scrutiny over extravagant parties and ongoing legal battles, often portrayed as a figure of intrigue and controversy. He has skillfully navigated the fine line between admiration and suspicion throughout his career. Kim unfollowed Diddy 24 hours before that happened. She and Chris has closed ties, but the FBI and law enforcement, they know something was going to happen. They know everything. I'm the pussy that never killed nobody, right? But that means I can say whatever I want and not go to jail. Kardashians kidnapped my daughter in public and I didn't have the address of my child. Terry Lynn Carrington, who put together Beyonce's entire female band, which was Matthew Knowles' idea because he couldn't get Beyonce to stop people. Guess you didn't know your daughter well enough because she just started f***ing all the girls. Say what now? Guess you didn't know your daughter well enough because she just started f***ing all the girls. So the party's going on, the party's off the chain, the party's already a success. I remember Beyonce had just dropped Crazy in Love. I remember that, that that's what was just killing the dance floor. And, I, and, and she was dead. Shut it down, okay? Stand up my page, Tina. You know, you is out. The whore. Sell your children off so you can have furs and get shit. You knew your husband was pimping your daughter. You love Sean Carter knows that he will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. Like, I don't give a if you wanted to get away from you. Similarly, Bran's journey has been marred by personal struggles, including addiction and public disputes, leading many to view him as unpredictable and reckless. His chaotic persona, once a magnet for public attention, has also contributed to a reputation of volatility. Yet, like Diddy, Brand has managed to reinvent himself, maintaining public interest despite facing considerable controversy. This latest footage compels us to reconsider their relationship in light of these scandals. Is their friendship a refuge from the scrutiny they each face in their personal lives? Or does it reflect an unspoken understanding between two figures teetering on the brink of scandal? As we watch them share laughter and plot their Vegas getaway, we cannot help but wonder how much of their bond is rooted in navigating the highs and lows of fame, and how much is about staying relevant. The juxtaposition of their friendship against their public scandals adds layers of complexity to their relationship. On one hand, the footage reveals two individuals enjoying life, seemingly unaffected by the controversies surrounding them. On the other, it illustrates their ability to control their images, crafting narratives that align with their public personas. So I need to give you a massive flashing red warning here. <clears throat> what I'm about to say is quite disturbing. There's a lot of like uncomfortable language. Um, and uh, if you are triggered or upset by sex assaults and violent assaults, etc., then this is definitely not the show for you tonight. The accuser is named Ashley Parham, and she has agreed to allow her name to be made public. Let's be real clear about that. She is going public with her name. She says that in February of 2018, she met a man named Shane Pierce at a bar, and that Shane FaceTimed Diddy outside on the sidewalk, apparently trying to impress her. But Ashley Parham says that she told both Shane and Diddy on FaceTime that she wasn't impressed. And this is important. She says she believed uh, that Diddy had something to do with the murder of Tupac Shakur and said as much. Allegedly, Diddy warned her that she would pay for saying something like that. So let's just fast forget a month later, where she says this guy Shane invited her to come to his apartment. And the lawsuit says, quote, Plaintiff and defendant Shane then began to watch a movie, and defendant Shane offered her a glass of water, which he retrieved and brought back to the plaintiff. Uh, a few minutes later, um, Ashley Parnas says that P. Diddy showed up, 
with an entourage, including his top aide, Christina Corum, an unnamed woman who is not a defendant in the suit, and three unnamed men, one of whom she says was Diddy's driver, and Parham says that that driver waited outside uh, throughout the whole of what I'm about to tell you. Uh, Parham says that Diddy was antagonistic from the start, and that he put a knife to her face. And now, this is where I start reading directly from the complaint. Uh, defendant Shane then partially undressed plaintiff, and then defendant Diddy removed the remainder of plaintiff's clothing, removing the knife from her face, and then retrieved a bottle of liquid from a large fanny pack. Defendant Diddy then squirted a bottle of liquid on plaintiff, which placed her in fear that she was being squirted with a chemical substance like acid. Plaintiff soon realized the substance was an oil slash lubricant. Plaintiff was squirted with this liquid substance all over the entirety of her naked body. Defendant KK was then told by defendant Diddy to insert what looked like a syringe from sterile packaging into plaintiff's vagina. Defendant KK did as told and then told defendant Diddy that she was unable to use the IUD because it had prematurely been released from its packaging. An IUD is a birth control device. Uh, defendant Diddy, upset by this, took the so-called so, so syringe from defendant KK and tried inserting it into plaintiff's vagina instead. Defendant KK and Diddy began to argue as defendant KK continued to advise defendant Diddy that since the IUD had been prematurely released from its packaging, there was no way they could insert it into plaintiff's vagina effectively. After some time, defendant Diddy heeded the advice of defendant KK and removed the syringe from plaintiff's vagina and handed it to defendant KK. Defendants KK and Jane Doe then exited defendant Shane's residence, leaving the plaintiff alone with defendants Diddy, Shane, and Doe's number one and two. Defendant Diddy then picked up a television remote that was near to plaintiff and violently inserted it into plaintiff's vagina. Defendant Diddy, while violently raping plaintiff with a television remote, told plaintiff that her life was in his hands and that if he wanted, he could, quote, take her and she would never be seen again. Plaintiff began hysterically crying from the threats by Diddy, along with the pain of being violently, vaginally raped by defendant Diddy with the television remote, as well as the lingering pain from the ordeal with the IUD syringe insertion. Defendant Diddy then instructed defendant Shane to turn plaintiff on her stomach, seemingly tired of hearing plaintiff's blood-curdling cries. Defendant Shane then grabbed plaintiff by her abdomen and hips and turned plaintiff on her stomach. Defendant Diddy then instructed defendant Shane to put a pillow over her head because he didn't want to see her face or hear her cries and instructed defendant Shane to anally rape plaintiff. Defendant Shane did as he was told by defendant Diddy and began to anally rape plaintiff. Defendant Diddy then violently raped plaintiff anally after defendant Shane. Defendant Doe number two then joined defendants Diddy and Shane taking a turn anally raping plaintiff. Immediately after defendant number two raped plaintiff, he exited defendant Shane. To learn new details today following the arrest of Sean Diddy Combs in New York City as he's expected to begin a, a, be arraigned this morning, Eyewitness News reporter Irene Cruz here in studio with the latest. Irene. Ultimately, this footage provides more than a mere glimpse into Diddy and Russell Brand's friendship. It sparks discussions about the intricate dynamics of celebrity lives. Are they just entertainers having fun or do they highlight how fame can shield individuals from accountability? As conversations surrounding this footage unfold online, it becomes clear that this new insight encourages a broader reflection on themes of fame, friendship, and the murky lines between public personas and personal realities. Looking closely at what this footage reveals about Diddy and Brand's relationship, especially in light of their recent controversies, adds a darker layer to their interactions. While the video showcases their laughter and camaraderie, the public awareness of their struggles casts a shadow over their friendship. Once seen as light-hearted, their bond now reflects the turbulence that has followed them throughout their careers.
Diddy, once the embodiment of hip-hop glamour, now faces legal challenges and allegations threatening his legacy. His lavish parties, previously celebrated as symbols of success, are now scrutinised amid claims of misconduct and exploitation, sparking long-standing rumours about what truly occurs at his infamous gatherings. This footage compels us to question whether the joy they display masks deeper issues. In conclusion, the renewed interest in Diddy and Russell Brand's friendship offers a fascinating lens through which to view the duality of celebrity life. It unveils the darker aspects of fame, revealing sacrifices and challenges that frequently go unacknowledged. As we watch the footage and consider public reactions, it becomes evident that the narrative surrounding Diddy and Brand extends beyond their individual journeys. It serves as a commentary on the broader landscape of celebrity culture. Their friendship, marked by highs and lows, illustrates the complexities of navigating public life, where opinions can shift in an instant. While it remains uncertain whether this new footage will alter public perception, it undoubtedly serves as a powerful reminder of the intricate realities underlying the lives of those we admire.